I've got a couple more of these uh, two amp uh, 12 volt power supplies intended for LED tape and if you watch this channel much you, you may have seen the previous video where I took some of these apart and was surprised to find that they contained really good power supplies but as if they'd been repurposed from something else. So I was quite tempted to buy a couple of these and treat them as lucky bag power supplies to see what I get. So um, let's open them and see what we've got this time. I looked at my last video, which suggests that the opening point is about here, which might be wrong. Oh, it maybe is wrong. I don't want to chew these up too much, because if they're okay, I want to kind of reuse them. Oh, that is... Yeah, that's not easy to open. I should actually be looking uh, for imperfections in the casing, which, you know, sometimes you, by looking at the case you can tell where the indents are. I'm not really seeing that around the outside of these. Is it the end? No, it doesn't really feel like that. I think I'm going to have to go in here again. Oh, there we go. Oh, there, there it was. Ah, uh, open you cursed thing. I think these might be a different actual case. Okay. Let's try the other side. Yeah, I think they're a different case because they're, they're not opening in the same way. Uh, so, that's getting there. I think they may be closed from this end, not sure I'll find out when I open it. Oh yes, I can see a catch there. Oh, that makes them quite difficult to open. Oh, okay. Here we go. So have these been repurposed? The previous ones uh, had looked as though they'd had wires cut off and new ones tacked on. These ones look intact. They don't look like the other ones, which is... Uh, they do have an LED which does not shine in any way through the case. Big bit of sticky foam to jam it down against the bottom. Uh, so it looks actually quite good quality. It's got inlet suppression. It's got the capacitor and the... the um, Oh god, common mode interference suppression choke. It's got a little glass fuse, the type that goes bang. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be a dedicated switch mode chip. I don't think it is because I see a little transistor here. So that's probably just a generic transistor with a typical uh, circuit. Here's the smoothing capacitor. 400 volt, 10 microfarad. It's got the... It's got modest separation under here. It's got the opto-isolator for feedback. It's a very simple opto-isolator circuit with what looks like possibly just a Zener diode there. A little bit of uh, suppression between the two capacitors, a little uh, ferrite bead there. And there's the uh, capacitor that uh, reduces RFs, but couples this, uh, in a high frequency noise from the low voltage side to the high voltage sides for suppression. It looks okay, but I wonder how good the transformer is. I wonder what sort of quality um, the windings in that are. I think, to be honest, I may actually have to go in here and explore this. Okay, one moment, please. Okay, I've got the transformer out of it, and yeah, uh, I can see the heavy secondary here. Uh, it's not my favoured double insulated type of secondary. Um, uh, I think I'm going to have to sacrifice one of these power supplies to actually go in and unwind this transformer and see if it's got the isolation I like. So starting off on the outside here is the feedback winding. It's quite common for it just to be stuck on the outside. It's not a very high current winding. It not only provides a form of feedback, but it also usually provides a, a power supply to the circuitry as well. So I'm just going to...
scratch this tape down here and then try and separate this core. Right, it's not immediately obvious where this core joins. In the middle? I think I'm going to have to wiggle this and probably break it. I'm going to have to break it, I'm going to, yeah. Oh, actually it came across oh, came part okay. So, let's see if we can knock the other half of the core out. The only way I'm going to get into this is to remove the feedback winding. Okay. Let's remove the feedback winding. How many turns is it going to be? One, two, three, four, five turns. Next underneath that will be the secondary. couple of layers of tape. Oh, actually, you know what? The next under that is, in fact, this is the, the primary, which is interesting. Doesn't seem that many turns. It does mean that uh, here I can see it's coming close, but not that close, but it still is quite close in the sense that there's a the windings actually, this is sat on the internal, what appears to be the, the secondary, the heavy secondary. So let's, uh, let's remove that as well then. So I'll just cut that. I could rewind this transformer, that would be amusing. But probably not. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, 29, 30, 31, 32 turns. That seems a really small primary. I'm just going to cut this other wire off here, just snap it off. And that should be, unusually, it'll be the secondary in the middle. Now, I will say, the primary winding is just, it comes... I will say it's got the tape here to shroud between the two of them, but it's still not really comfortable. I, I kind of prefer a little bit more than tape between uh, certain death. But uh, having said that, it's not bad, I suppose. I'm looking for the end of the tape here so I can get that tape off. I'm not seeing the end of the tape. Where is the end of the tape? Is that it? It is now. This is probably going to all end in tears because it's, this tape is not quite coming off as desired. Oh, no, it's not. It's going to be one of those shred the tapes out scenarios. Oh, wait, no, no, I think I might have found the end of the tape. Okay, so there's the big beefy secondary with a... Uh, a pair of windings. So let's uh, hack that out and see how many turns there are of that. They've used a pair of wires just to, instead of one much heavier wire, just because it's easier to wind. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11 turns on that. And then, why have they put tape in the middle uh, of the plastic, Bob? And I wonder, what, is that to pack it out, perhaps? Let's uh, peel that off as well. There's no further winding under there, I shouldn't think.
Oh, righty ho. What earth is that for then? Why is there another winding? Unless one of these windings was a, for the power supply for this and it had a separate winding for the feedback, that would make sense, I suppose. So what's this going to be then? Is this going to be an auxiliary power? The, I'm going to have to maybe uh, re-look at this video afterwards and uh, do a bit of, you know, post-event analysis. So this winding in the middle one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. Perhaps that was the actual secondary there. Uh, so um, it is that typical construction that the single insulated secondary is still coming close to where the wires go into the middle um, it was almost disappointing finale find that extra winding in the middle um, it suggests that maybe um, you know th these were close closer to the the, uh, the higher voltage the main side than one would desire really and something that you're going to be handling so um, interesting enough uh, well worth sacrificing Okay, I have to admit I was slightly miffed in the last section of the video there because I hastily unwound this transformer without actually noting which pins the wires came off and the solution was simple. I simply got the other power supply, the matching one, opened it and metered across and I found that the primary was actually wound as two sections it, with a centre tap onto a pin that isn't actually connected in the circuit board and one of the sections of the primary was wound on the middle of the core, then the secondary was wound over that, then another layer of primary, and then the feedback. I'm not sure why they did that. Maybe there is some reason. Uh, I don't think it's so they can make it a multi-tap transformer for different voltages, uh, primary voltages, because this is supposedly a, a, a hundred... Uh, is it a universal voltage uh, transformer? Yes, 100 to 240 volts, so I wouldn't see any reason to do that. So. Um, Having done that and having looked at the circuit, I decided it's time to reverse engineer this circuit completely. So let's get all this out of the way. And I took a photo of the back of the circuit board and then just swapped the colours about, tweaked it, flipped it over, um, so everything matched the positions uh, as looking at the top of the circuit board and transferred all the component uh, details across. I'm just going to get all this, the shattered remnants of this power supply out of the way at the moment. So then I uh, transferred it onto paper. Now, actually, there's one component missing uh, on this that I should add in. Uh, is it an easy enough one to add in? It's from it's the uh, the RF decoupling capacitor here, which, technically speaking, goes to. It's actually going to uh, negative. All right, so uh, the high voltage decoupling capacitor is going from the negative on this side to there. There it's added now, and that is a two kilovolt, um, two point two nanofarad capacitor. Now that's uh, for uh, uh, noise suppression. It couples the output. Uh, the low voltage output to the main side and, and allows a path for noise to actually get basically re reference to ground. So let's uh, look at this circuit blow by blow. It's all fairly standard components. So the mains comes in, 
And it goes, first of all, the live goes through this fuse, and then there's a capacitor across the mains for interference suppression. This is a 100 nanofarad capacitor, probably X to round about 630 volts. Uh, then it goes through a common mode interference uh, suppression choke. Now, this is a sort of like a mini transformer with two windings on it, that when um, you get common noise on both windings, they basically, because they're on the same core, they cancel each other out. It's just a very efficient way of cancelling noise. Then you've got the four diodes, which I've drawn as a rectifier here, and this capacitor, and that forms the power supply. So that's a 400 volt, 10 megafarad capacitor. The uh, transistor here switches this primary winding on the transformer. Now the primary is got that, I've drawn, shown the centre tap, it's just basically it's that, a winding, then it's taken out to one of the pins, and then the secondary is wound on, then the second part of the primary is wound over the top of that, an unusual arrangement. And it goes to the collector of a fairly common uh, large uh, NPN transistor called a Bull 128D-B, just a high speed, high voltage transistor. And that then goes down to negative. Now, at power up, the transistor is started by this one meg ohm resistor, which is this one here. And it's coupling from the collector, which is pretty much at the full uh, mains voltage, uh, rectified mains voltage, about 330 volts. Uh, and it's coupled from the collector of the transistor to its base, and that starts turning it on. When it starts turning on, current flows through the primary, and couples not only into the secondary down here, but it also couples into a feedback winding. And initially, the feedback winding, the current goes, takes this route, it goes from the feedback winding through this 220 ohm resistor, this 8.2 nanofarad capacitor. Now let's see, I can uh, point them out here. They're over here. Um, and that uh, turns the transistor on harder, uh, more current flows through, more current comes to feedback, and it keeps turning it on until either three of situa three situations occur. Technically speaking, I suppose it could just turn it right on under a short circuit condition until the winding is saturated. It couldn't generate any more magnetic field, and then no current would be coupled across to the feedback winding, and it would then turn the transistor off because there was nothing to keep it on, and that uh, magnetic field would collapse. The other thing that can actually happen is that if the uh, transformer is quite lightly loaded, the voltage in the feedback winding will go up quite high, and as soon as it exceeds the voltage of the Zener diode, uh, current flows through the Zener, through this 1K3 resistor, and into the uh, base of this small C945 transistor, and that will turn the transistor off early if there's too light a load to really keep it on any longer. It's sort of self-regulating in a way. And the third thing that can turn this transistor off <coughs> is from the feedback winding, There's as soon as the voltage exceeds about the forward voltage of this diode and it goes through this transistor, which is part of an opto isolator from the uh, output, then that will immediately turn that uh, transistor on and therefore shunt this the base of this transistor and turning it off. Now that means that as soon as the voltage from the feedback winding exceeds the diode voltage, it's going to do that. But it suggests that even when the transformer's not putting, not got any, uh, you know, it's not even, it's not needing the 12 volt, it's not even needing this to run to generate its 12 volts, it must run at very low level, just a very uh, small current, just to keep it trickling through, just to keep things topped up, which is interesting. When this uh, turns off, another thing happens. Uh, the bottom of this coil is being pulled from positive down to negative. So when this transistor turns off, you'll tend to get a the sort of reverse kick of the magnetic field. You'll get a positive pulse. And to protect the transistor from that, they've got this uh, DC snubber network. This is a, a monodirectional snubber network, it, uh, whereas you might find across contacts you'd get a capacitor and resistor. In this case, it's a diode, and that positive spike goes through that diode uh, and starts charging up this 1.5 nano capacitor. That's uh, this little snubber network down here, the diode, the capacitor, and this resistor. And the capacitor uh, is more than capable of taking that sharp transient spike. It just, uh, by the time it's charged up from that spike, the value of the capacitor is such, even though it's only 1.5 nanofarad, 
that the voltage across it won't be very high. And technically speaking, I suppose ultimately the the higher the transient uh, spikes, the, the voltage in that will gradually creep up, but it has this 82K resistor across it that just continually trickle discharges it, ready for the next spike. So that's the, uh, <coughs> the main side of it done. It's coupling over now to the secondary. The secondary goes through this huge diode here, this diode here, and it charges up this ca capacitor. Now, this capacitor... It also has the LED, which is not visible through the case of this, and a 1K5 resistor. So it acts as the first layer of smoothing and also that LED lights up across it to, to show that the power's on. And then, I've drawn this as a very small choke, but really it's just a ferrite bead core over a wire. There's a, that's a, a, a stage of filtering the output for noise. So it blocks very high frequency noise uh, and then charges this capacitor. So with the, the two capacitors and the, the choke in between, you end up with very smooth DC. On the output, across the output rails, you've got a 60 ohm, 8 ohm resistor. The LED that's in the optocoupler that controls the uh, primary side, uh, that's uh, this resistor, the LED in this optocoupler. And then a Zener diode. Now, I measured the voltage uh, with the, just a power supply, and the LED in the optocoupler is just about 1, 1 1.2 volts. So it's got an 11 volt Zener in series with it. And as soon as the voltage gets anywhere near the 12 volts, the Zener starts conducting, the LED turns on, that uh, turns on this transistor and the opto isolator, and that turns off the, uh, it sort of shuts it down to a sort of standby mode. Um, as until it needs another boost to actually bring it back up to 12 volts. Um, I'm guessing, in a sense, that I wonder if this will operate in a sort of fairly linear region. It might operate as a slight analogue. It's not going to suddenly make a just transition. And that uh, may ultimately just sort of balance it off and just regulate this in a sort of linear fashion. And that's it. It's pretty neat. It's quite interesting. The transformer doesn't have the sort of isolation between the primary and secondary that I would prefer, as I've mentioned in the last part of the video. But uh, there's the circuit diagram. It's, it's quite interesting, actually. It was quite enjoyable uh, reverse engineering that. So, yeah, interesting little power supplies. <laughs>